Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. I did a recent video on fusion bonsai using 26 beech trees. It, it was a really fun project, but I like to try and make bonsai accessible to people. So I thought I'd do a smaller version using this stick, a few beech trees, and this is the kind of project anyone can put together. At this time of year, material like this is readily available from nurseries, garden centers, so you can pick them up, trees like this, really cheaply. And I'm not sure exactly how many I'm going to need. I think I'll still need a fair few. As in the last video, I'm going to try and select trees. This is a good one that are going to be able to fit up against this piece of wood like that. And then I'll arrange them around. So I'm going to go through this pile of trees select ones that I think could work, different thicknesses, that's another good one, and I'll come back to you when I've selected them all. The good thing about bonsai is we're always learning, and having already done one fusion project, one of the things I learned is that it's easy having a, a nice long, long screw like that to fix to. My plan is to just work my way round, kind of rotating the trees around this piece of wood, much smaller piece of wood than last time so it'll use far fewer trees and it's a lot easier to handle and work with. However, I must say that I have cut more root off these than I did with the previous trees. These were the reject these were the trees I rejected for the first project, so they're not as ideal. Therefore I've had to take more off. So they've got more chance of dying, but I'm hoping with a nice bit of root left on. Oh I should have enough anyway. Oh I'm quite happy with that. That looks good. Just got this one tree hit oh no. It was just in the wrong position. You've got to spend a bit of time at this stage fiddling around, <clears throat> just jiggling them, manipulating each tree, just to try and <clears throat> get it so that the roots are all flaring out. Sometimes you've got to take them out, put them back in a slightly different position. There we go. Once I've got them like this, in some sort of rough position, this is where the nail comes into play. So, I wrap my elastic band around the nail. A uh, screw, should I say, it's not a nail, it's a screw. And then, round it goes. And that roughly holds these in place. And at this point now, I can start rotating them so that the roots are pointing outwards because this is the base of the tree and I want all these roots to be like nicely pointing out and the potential for this is to have a pretty amazing nabari in the future this is the funnest part for me where I attach the wire that rubber band has done its job now in terms of just holding things roughly in place. So I can get rid of that. And now it's just a question of sort of gathering these trunks together and using this rubber sleeve to sort of pull everything around. Th this one is awful. I knew it, I knew I shouldn't have used that one. This tree here is useless, I'm, I'm getting rid of it. It's gotta go. It's spoiling the whole, the whole composition's been spoilt by that one because it's the wrong shape. This one's far better, it's just going to fit within the composition much easier. And I think I can just thread, thread the roots through without disturbing that rubber band. 
if I'm lucky. Here we go. Yeah. Pull those roots through. Pull that band up there. There we go. So we've got a much better tree in position now. That wire's wrapped nicely around there now. Nice and tight. And this is the point where I can squeeze these together. And by getting a really nice tight connection here, there's not that many gaps. I'm really going quite hard at this base because this is the most important bit. This is where the fusion is going to happen. Well, I say the fusion is going to happen. It should hopefully happen all up the tree. But if I can get this base to fuse, what goes on elsewhere is almost secondary in some ways. So I'm really gripping with my ha right hand as hard as I possibly can. What's that there? Oh, that's a branch. So I'm really squeezing as much as I can. Pulling as hard as I can with my left hand as well on this. Really gripping. What's that? That's a branch that I've just broken off and another one. I'd rather lose these branches now and focus on really gripping tightly on this wire and getting these trees into position. It's much more important than the odd branch. They'll grow back no problem. The key is to get this lovely and tight and then it's got a chance of fusing. It's the same as my other video or very similar to my other video just on a smaller scale. Still quite tricky. There we go, pull that nice and tight. Another loop through. Uh, nice and tight. Uh. I think in bonsai you have to be the type of person who likes learning. And every time I do any kind of project, there's always learning to be had. And what I've kind of discovered here is using a fairly slender stick to work around like this. I've not got the dramatic taper, which would have been nice. However, what I have got is really good contact between all the trunks going all the way up here. So there's not really many gaps and these are going to heal up these gaps fairly quickly and hopefully that means I'll get fusion a lot quicker. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. So what do I do with the rest of all these beech trees? What I've decided is I've got three here that are going to be ideal for replacing trees that die in the other two compositions. So I'm going to pop those up individually. I've got two trees here with fantastic nabari root flare i'm going to plant those up individually as bonsai trees in their own right so that's five that leaves me with a bit of a motley crew of awful trees terrible roots and i'm going to combine these into one ugly tree <laughs> that's the plan i'm going to call this operation embrace the ugly these trees I've got some weird roots, awful shapes like knuckle type roots, things coming out. And what I've decided is let's just embrace the ugliness of them and put them all together. So oh, this is a really freaky one. My idea is to kind of combine them almost in a clump style, but an exposed root clump style, if, if you know what I mean. I hope you do know what I mean, because I don't really know what I mean. <laughs> I'm just thinking if I could have these top sections of this tree, of the tree, visible from multiple weird, ugly trees, maybe that might make something 
I won't go as far as to say beautiful, but interesting. So, I, mm, I think there's legs in this. So how do I go about it? Well, what I'm thinking is, a bit like when I put a clump together, if I can just somehow pick the individual trees, almost get to know each individual tree and kind of pair up the, the ugly roots. So get the roots at a similar sort of position like this. So all these, the idea is that sort of all this stuff here will be exposed. Let's get this big one in there. Oh, look at the roots on that, that's a shocker. So that can sort of go there and these, these roots there will look good. And I'm just kind of stacking them on top of each other. We'll get another big one in. This is, this is a, probably the biggest of them all and get that there. I really don't like this, this one with this big knuckle. I, I want to hide that in the centre somehow. So I want to go back, open up and somehow get that in the middle. And then this last one, it's got very little going for it. It's not even really got many roots on it. So again, I'll somehow hide that in the center as well. There, so we've got a real I think this needs to go in the very centre, thinking about it. It won't go on the sides. So I'll use that as like the centre to sort of wrap everything else around like that. Yeah, that's going to work. And if I work everything in kind of radially like that. Cover up those two ugly ones with this. Then get round to the other side and put more of these in. Oh yeah, I'm getting a system now. <laughs> You're probably thinking, is that what you call a system? <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Tell me there's not an interesting tree there. Well, it wouldn't be that hard to persuade me, but <laughs> I'm gonna try and get some of the roots pointing outwards so that we have some kind of flaring root base, hopefully. And my plan now is just to combine these at this base using vet tape. I've got a piece of vet tape here. I think I'll take my gloves off for this part. And because I've not had to cut any roots off these trees, these should survive really easily. I'm not really worried at all about these surviving. So, again, as I always use my vet tape, oh, 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 I ripped it. That's the first time I've ripped vet tape by going over the top with it. So it's good to push things to the limits, then you know what you can and can't do. So, there. Uh, oh, now we're talking seriously ugly clump style. Love it. And I'm just working that vet tape round now, so tight in there. That's as tight, tight as I've ever used vet tape. Hopefully this will just force all these trunks now to kind of merge together and
form one kind of freaky weird tree. That'd be great. It's going to have that very natural look in, in natural in terms of disorderly and you know, I don't think it'll look like it's been made by a person. What do you think? In bonsai, I think you need to listen to what the material tells you. And what this is telling me here is, it's very naturally coming in to quite a tight space there, from which point it's spreading out. You know, it's just naturally doing it. So I think I'll try and get the fusion to happen all the way up to this point. So I think it makes sense to just try and get this top bit up here as tight as possible so that we get that fusion. Oh, I'm really trying to pull it to, to force them together. And by getting that top bit there tight in like that, this should, there. Again, I'm going over the top, but I don't mind. I'd rather snap it by pushing the limits like this. I can always come around and apply more rather than apply it too loosely. There. So I'll leave that gap in the middle because that'll give me an opportunity to look at the trunks and see when they are beginning to fuse, if they hopefully fuse at all. As these merge, I think they'll produce that, those beautiful columns running up the trunk. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really good. This has got a mass of really fine roots there. It's great. And that'll fit really nicely in this pot here. Um, the question is, do I try and spread these roots out somehow it'll be very difficult they're so solid and i don't want to damage them and start cutting them off because i think it'll affect the health of the tree and i want this one to survive so i'm just going to put it in there and as i said earlier you know these roots may well be exposed at this section anyway so let's just get it in Before I work these roots, I've got a, a 2023 calendar here. It's a landscape one. It's got some really nice images in, some spooky ones. Look at that. That was a rock. Um, what, else, what else is in here? Oh, that's uh, the in Derbyshire. They're just landscapes anyway. You know what landscapes look like. Well, that's the spare calendar I've got. I get them printed for my family every year. I'm going to pick a winner for the calendar, give it away, it can go anywhere in the world. All you have to do is comment on this video and use the word freaky. <laughs> As I'm working my way around, I'm going to try and manipulate some of these roots around into better positions like that to there. Um, but before I do anything like that, it's going to take me ages to get this soil in, into these roots. It's got to go right underneath, right in. And there's loads of work doing this, so I won't bore you with all this content. This route here is it's just annoying me. I don't like it. So what I've decided to do is place the a wire with a piece of plastic sleeving around it. Loop the wire back round. Need me fine nose pliers for this job. So I can just grab that wire. There. 
twist that round. That's nicely secured. And the hope now is that I can pull on this wire from the other side and kind of pull that branch, that, that root down like that. There we go. That's how I want, that's the position I want it in. That's much better. This might sound a little arrogant, but I think I might have stumbled upon something here. This technique of taking cheap, bare root stock, beech, hornbeam, larch, birch, whatever, it's very difficult to do anything with it in terms of bonsai, but by using this technique, perhaps we can create some really interesting trees and it's easy to do, you know, those other fusion techniques, I think they're quite complicated, they're quite hard. This is dead easy. You just get a load of them, you bunch them together, you wrap some vet tape round, you can use raffia or whatever you choose, and you just bang it in a pot. What I would love is if some of my subscribers could have a go at this technique themselves. I'd love in a year or two for us to be able to come to sort of, not come together physically, but share our images you know, people share their successes or failures with this technique in the future. And we can kind of, maybe this is something that is a real goer in the bonsai world. So get out there, pick yourself some up, have a go and let me know. I'm going to finish with a 360 because it's got some nice movement, this trunk as well. As I rotate this tree round now, you can begin to see it's got some nice subtle movements to it. I really like it. I mean, from there you can see it sort of comes off and back up. It comes in and then flares out here. I think that's, it could, could go on to be a really good tree. I, I genuinely believe that. As always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.